Fear Not, Episode 28. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Michelle Pullen. Welcome, Michelle. How are you today? Very good. Thank you, Billy. Great. Are you ready to fear not today? Yes. With no formal education in sewing or publishing, Michelle Pullen self-published her first book on machine embroidery at the age of 23. Since then, she's published four additional books and numerous patterns for the home sewing market in Australia, Canada, and the U.S. Michelle also founded the Australian Sewing Guild, which celebrates 20 years next year. The Guild brings together like-minded people with a common interest right across Australia. Michelle has moved away from the home sewing industry to raise her family. She's also currently a practicing artist working in pencil and paint. She firmly believes it is her purpose to make beauty in life. Michelle, can you take a few minutes to fill in the gaps and maybe give us a brief glimpse of your personal life as well? Um, When I was younger and when I published my first book, um, I've really realized as I've gotten older that that was something I just did with no fear. Um, I think that's youth in a way. Um, but I have regained that back again. I sort of probably found that what, through parenthood and so forth, we would become more cautious in life. Um, but now that my daughter has uh, grown um, into a young adult, I have uh, really feel the freedom to get back to just trusting in instinct and, um, yeah, living without that fear. Well, great. Well, thanks for sharing. Michelle, would you also share with us one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? Probably the biggest fear I've had to face was um, the prospect of losing losing faith. Um, I'd never realized how important faith was until I was on the brink of losing it. The love not to prevail filled me with a deep fear. Something I was, you know, so scared of even to truly contemplate it. I felt faith's primeval roots, the importance of it to humanity, and that without it we, we, we would be less human. The prospect of losing faith dropped me to my knees at the time. Now I sort of understand why we kneel when we pray. Through the trauma of my elder sister Susan's death, my family became fractured and I found myself without contact with my other sister Judy and my mum and my sister Susan's husband Brett and son Benjamin. I felt compassion for everybody that was involved and realised that uh, time was needed to heal the wounds. My brother-in-law Brett had um, cared and nursed my sister Susan for over a decade as uh, multiple sclerosis took over her body. During this time, he also raised their son Benjamin, who was born with cerebral palsy. I hold Brett in the highest esteem for the sacrifices he, he made and his capability of giving. Brett embodied to me what was right, sort of like the good in the world. I felt if our relationship did not heal, Hate would win and love would lose, which, as I said, was beyond, you know, I was scared to even contemplate that. Brett and myself were not so much estranged by our personal relationship, but by the overall family trauma that surrounded Susie's death. I thought it would take a couple of years to rebuild our relationship. It actually took four years, and it was during that time that my faith was tested I just projected love. Um, you know, I had occasional contact with my family over this time, and I found the strength, you know, not to lay blame on anyone. 
I just simply gave love, believing in its power to heal. So they were a very long four years, and at times I had doubts in the power of love, which to me that signified the loss of faith because my faith is held so strongly in that power of love. Brett and myself have a beautiful relationship now, and my nephew Benjamin just brings me, you know, true joy to my heart. I remained estranged from my mother and my sister Judy and had concluded that this may stay the same. Then in 2015, Judy's son called me to, um, asking for help to care for Judy in the last stages of breast cancer. All of the past and all that bad emotion was washed away on our first meeting and we didn't even need to talk about the past. My sister needed me, and with unconditional love I gave. These experiences, and facing them with love and holding no fear of being vulnerable, has actually empowered me. And I really feel humbled to have been given a life that, through death, has shown and taught me the power of love. And I really realise that only through death and trauma could I have learnt these lessons, and if I wasn't honest to my own heart, these lessons could have been lost, which would mean that those I love who died would have died without purpose. I also now have a really loving relationship with my mum, so love wins in the end. Um, Michelle, could you maybe get a little bit into more specifically what you did to help you regain faith? It was just, I suppose, hanging, and I felt like I was hanging on to a thread of faith, Um you know, that, that just within oneself to be compassionate, uh, not to blame, not to hold on to hatred, and that love would bring it, would make everything all right in the end. Um, but sometimes that was a very thin thread, and I, being human, you know, I had my doubts. And as I said, the prospect of love not winning, that filled me with fear. Because I'm a person who strongly believes in, in love. Um, and if it was lost, I think I would have thought I was lost. My purpose as a human would have been lost. So at those moments where it was really thin, I'm, I'm assuming you did a lot of praying or meditating? Yep, a lot of thinking, a lot of being honest to my own heart, uh, not being afraid to be looked deep within oneself. Do you have any resources that you would like to pass on to us that would maybe help us on our own journeys in overcoming fear? Things that you've come across that have made a big difference in your life? Um, well, just generally researching, I suppose. Um, I'm a lover of music, so finding the meaning, you know, in 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 beautiful songs that touch you. Um, and also, again, just allowing yourself to be vulnerable to those that are close to you, um, not, you know, not keeping your emotions a secret. Um, yeah, and allowing, allowing yourself to be human, really. Are you ready for the speed run? Okay, let's go. <laughs> what individual that's either fiction or real has made the most impact on your life? Um, probably my husband, Vincent, um, only because he has such a undoubting belief in me um, and obviously being my husband he's the person I can be most vulnerable with um, so he has faith in me so he's been a huge impact in my life. And if you could instantly change one thing in the world what would that be? Uh, I would banish blame. <laughs> What's your biggest weakness? Uh, probably wine. <laughs> What's your biggest strength? Um I think being compassionate, being, being able to put myself in other people's shoes, yes, I would say that's, that's a very strong strength of mine. If you could only have one book to read, what would that be? Ooh. Oh, that's a hard question. Um, books of faith, I would say. Um, uh, books of philosophy, yeah. Michelle, what's your idea of a vacation? Oh, vacation, time with family and friends, drinking wine by the sea. Do you have a favourite sound? 
Um, probably the poetry of music, I would say. Um, I love the words of music as much as the music itself. And if someone would like to connect with you, Michelle, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, probably via email or on Facebook, I would say. It's just Michelle Pullen, Australia. And do you have any parting advice for us today? Um, probably, probably just not to take life too seriously and laugh, find the beauty in life, even during the hard times. I think that's uh, during the hard times when we need beauty most in our life. And if we're not afraid to find that, we will we'll have fantastic lessons. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, I really do appreciate you coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure, Billy, and all the best to yourself. And all uh, Merry Christmas to all of America. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.